Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the future. Hill Valley Stationers. It's closed for the night. Luckily, I don't have a burning need for a greeting card. Ah. No time for a haircut now, even if they were open. Besides, they'd probably cut it too short. Pardon me, sir. From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only one thing. You're heading for Tannen's speakeasy, am I right? Uh, yeah. Can't you tell me the way? Down! Straight down! The last stop before the Inferno. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. Me, 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 me. Oh. You say you've lost your self-respect, but you should care. What in heaven's name? Oh, sorry, Miss Strickland. Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry. Mr. Brown, why is there a dog in that vehicle? Why? Well, to advance the human condition, of course. Hello, Mike. Mike? Mr. Corleone, what are you doing in that getup? I'm going undercover. How exciting! You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. And you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment. You're not angry about the rocket drill? Water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance. I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Ine and I have been up to. Famous last words. All right. Now, where's that speakeasy? Mike, you're just in time. How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but there'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. It's almost as if he's been working with me for years. More like decades. Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you! Ready to go, Einstein? Watch this! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. Uh-oh. Einstein! No! Get him out of there! Uh. Fail safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. I'll go see if I can find something to help. Or someone. Nineteen eighty five, Doc. We got a problem. You kind of left your dog on top of the uh, transients. Welcome. Well, they don't get more transient than me and Doc.
Hey, Doc, how's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. How are your investigations going? Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never have the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter, those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the expo. It doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Damn, it's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm, I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted and I'll handle the rest. You know, I honestly thought he was talking about Herbert West. If you don't know who that is, I'll flash a, uh, I'll flash the uh, movie title card across the screen. Right about now. I haven't really made any progress with Trixie yet. Well, get out there and make some. If she doesn't blow the whistle on Kid tonight, he may never be brought to justice. Just keep your head low, Doc. I'll be back soon. I'll keep an eye out for your grandfather. The movie Shark. I think that was a 1969 movie. Hill Valley Expo, October 12th through the 15th. Doc says the Expo was the day he officially became a scientist. Seems like he's running a couple months ahead of schedule. Cool. Frankenstein. Don't worry, Emmett. I'm sure you'll get it right someday. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Right now, I'm more concerned with Einstein. What went wrong with your rocket car? I'm not entirely sure. As soon as we get Einstein down, I'm gonna go look for it. What's up with you and Edna? A couple months ago, I could swear she was making goo-goo eyes at you. That was before my father had her stay sober society meeting thrown out of our house. Now she takes every opportunity she can get to snipe at me and my work. It's very distracting. Have you seen that Frankenstein movie yet? I hear it's pretty inspirational. Not yet. I've been so busy with my rocket car that I haven't found the time. But I'm planning on going tonight. At least I will once I get Einstein down. Why don't you take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute? Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Mike. But once Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. And right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. Why don't you go look for your car now? And leave Einie stuck on a ledge? <laughs> Never! Dogs are much more important than any silly rocket car. Especially one that doesn't work at all.
You know anything about Trixie Trotter? The songbird of the Sierras? The nightingale of the north? The floozy of the foothills? Uh... Never heard of her. Man, I've definitely never snuck into tan and speakeasy to listen to her. So you're really going to see Frankenstein tonight? I'd hate for you to miss it. Oh, don't worry. Nothing in the world would keep me from seeing a movie about a mad scientist with delusions of godhood. Cool. Why don't you go look for your car now? And leave Einy stuck on a ledge? <laughs> Never! Dogs are much more important than any silly rocket car. Especially one that doesn't work at all. Hmm. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? My pop says he's a good cop when he's not drinking. Good. Of course, now I hear he drinks all the time. Well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einy off that ledge. The only thing I want to break this bottle on is one of those goons' heads. Hey, Emmett. Need a light? Turn that thing off. I've been distilling Tannin's hooch into rocket fuel all afternoon. Mm. One stray match could light me up like a Roman candle. Hey, Emmett. Need a light? Turn that thing off. I've been distilling Tannin's hooch into rocket fuel all afternoon. One stray match could light me up like a Roman candle. Okay, then. Is that a free-range flame? Not sure what that. What's all this? These are my pamphlets, laying out in scientific detail the horrors visited upon those who succumb to the temptations of alcohol. Lost Fortnite. I am particularly fond of that one. It tells the true life tale of Johnny, who woke up in a pile of his own sick, completely unable to remember the previous two weeks of his life. Heavy. Actually, the pamphlets are quite light. See? The only thing I want to break this bottle on is one of those goons' heads. The only thing I want to break this bottle on is one of those goons' heads. Hmm. Want a light? I don't smoke. And even if I did, I certainly wouldn't employ such a garish lighter. Not sure what that... Not sure what that... Hey, Edna. Mr. Corleone, what can I do for you? You wouldn't happen to know anything about Trixie Trotter, would you? Kid Tannen's latest conquest? Well, she claims to be a lounge singer from Seattle, but my sources in Washington have never heard of her. I mean, honestly, Trixie Trotter, what kind of name is that? Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? Parker? Just another soul lost to the twin vices of booze and despair. I've asked him to tell me his story for my column. Sort of a cautionary tale, but he's never in the mood to talk to me. Whatever happened with that speakeasy arsonist? I was about to ask you the same question. Me? Don't play coy with me. I may not have any journalistically acceptable proof, but I know you had a hand in Carl Sagan's daring escape from the authorities. Didn't you think that Sagan was innocent? I used to, but after he escaped, two more speakeasies were torched in Colfax and Georgetown. That's just a coincidence. Coincidence? Or is our friend Carl a serial arsonist? 
I mean, what would you care? I mean, Kid Tan practically sells alcohol at those places. I'm pretty sure that Carl Sagan didn't start those fires. We'll see. One of the reasons I'm camped out so close to Tannen's new speakeasy is it gives me the chance to catch the arsonist in the act. It'll make a great story for my column. Hmm. What have you got against dogs, anyway? They're smelly, rude, completely unable to take care of themselves, and frankly, they're not very bright. If I had my druthers, dogs would be banned from public places. Harsh. It's a harsh world, Mr. Corleone. Hmm. What was that song you were singing earlier? Do you like it? I wrote it myself. It really gets the toes tapping at the Stay Sober Society meetings. Although I suppose that could be the shakes. Would you like to hear it again? Uh, sure. I knew if I waited long enough, somebody would request it. You say you've lost your self-respect, but you should care. It's not too late to redirect and start to care. Don't despise the good and pure. Time to rise up from the sewer. Wash off all that foul manure. Show the world you care. You should care. You should care. What people think of you. A ghost that you could name reclaiming your good name is what you ought to do. You should care. You should care. If your reputation is in disrepair, it's not going to hurt you to reclaim your virtue for you. Should care. Catchy. You really think so? Yeah, it's uh got a good hook to it. One needs a good hook if one is fishing for souls. Ow, my ears. Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Kid Tannen arrested. Oh, glorious day! When did it happen? Well, it hasn't happened yet, but it's gonna. Keep me posted. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. Crap, I don't have that recorder. This is no time for word games. Touch those, they're very sensitive. Sorry, not sure what that. Oh, oh, I'll put a headphone warning on a light. I don't smoke, and even if I did, I certainly wouldn't employ such a garish lighter. Edna! What? Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown! Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run... Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public safety. You know what represents a clear and present danger to public safety? Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars of all the ridiculous juvenile notions. You mock notions. me, but just imagine a world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. Heine, how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down? 
Holy cow, how did that happen? Testing, testing, sibilance, sibilance. Hey, quit playing with my equipment. Sorry. All right, let's go see what's happening in the speakeasy. Who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. Ew. Ew. Not sure what that... Not sure what that... Cabbage crates. Must be for the soup. Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Joe Piscopo? Take a hike, squirt. Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Am I? <laughs> Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Euronymous Bosch? Who gave you the right to knock on my door? The old gray mare? Who is the king of Siam? Bruce Springsteen? Who is the king of Siam? Joe Piscopo? Oh, I got the first one right. You just... Who said you were worthy? Doris Day? Who is the king of Siam? Am I? What will you do when I send you away? Lego your ego? <laughs> Who died and made you boss? Joe Piscopo? Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Joe Piscopo? Who said you were worthy? Boss Hog? Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Bruce Springsteen? Oh. oh! I. 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 Low, low, in, in. Uh. Uh. 
I, I, low, low. Uh, be right back, folks. I just struck gold. Who is the king of Siam? Am I? What will you do when I send you away? Wait till Wednesday? Where do you live? Live. From Russia, uh, with love. Who said you were worthy? Worthy. The old gray mare? What will you do if I break your leg? Lego your ego? Where did you come from? Where did you come from? From Russia. Uh, with love. Welcome to L Kids, sir. So the trick is the last syllable he says will be the first syllable you'll say. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to once again present the hottest little number this side of the Rockies. And when I say my pleasure, I think you all know what I'm talking about, am I right? So let's have a big L kid welcome for the one, the only, Trixie Trotter. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense. But I don't care. Out of my way, kid. You I got some sorrows to drown. I am my own superintendent. My star is on the ascendant. That's why I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what people think of me. I'm happy. Hey, I know you. You're Parker. Osford, Danny, Danny Parker. Hill Valley PD. Uh, have we met? You look my failure. Nah. Well, stranger. Sit down and have a drink on me. I hear you've been having troubles. Troubles? Buddy, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Want to talk about them? Do, do I? Do I? Yeah, I do. Listen, it all started when this car... Yeah, now about those troubles. Oh, I don't want to wallow in misery. I came here to get happy. Hallelujah! Did you be drinking so much on duty? Probably not, but this joint ain't open when I'm off duty. 
Shouldn't you be arresting Tannen? For what? Well, for running a speakeasy, for one thing. Well, I like this speakeasy. So there. Besides, if I arrested him, I'd have to arrest you and me and everyone else in here. And that's just way too much work for one little cop like me. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. I'm supposed to get this guy to arrest Kid Tannen tonight? El Kid. I still don't get it. It's like that El Cid place down in L.A., only it's El Kid. Ah, okay, I see. Oh my god, I might have just stumbled across another answer by coincidence. So no one can hear. Whisper in my ear, let me read you soft and clear. Don't make it for TC Mo, make it pianis. Hey Parker. You. So about so those troubles. No eh, I'm not really in the mood to talk about them right now. I just want a drink. And listen to Trixie. Should you be drinking so much on duty? Probably not, but this joint ain't open when I'm off duty. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. Let's get up it! Let's get up Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? The rent's unpaid, dear, we haven't a bus. But smiles were made, dear, for people Danny. like us. You. So about those troubles. Troubles? Ha! <laughs> I don't want to talk about all that depressing stuff. I want a party! See you later, Danny. I'll be. Okay, so I have to make him depressed. I'm great at that. Rage! Rage! What is this feeling that has me in its grip? What has me on the edge of curling my lip? Worse in the blues or the front page? There are strong. It's rage. I'm overflowing. I've asked my doctor and psychiatrist too. They tell me that there's not a thing I can do. There's no controlling Danny, and you. There's no controlling this rage. Shouldn't you be arresting Tannen? For what? Well, for running a speakeasy, for one thing. Well, I like this speakeasy. So there. Besides, if I arrested him, I'd have to arrest you and me and everyone else in here. And that's just way too much work for one little cop like me. So about those troubles. Go away. I'm drinking. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. It's rage. I'm overflowing with rage. I'm like a villain on a stage. You're relying in a cage full of rage. I'm overflowing with rage. Come to me, my melancholy baby. Cuddle up and 
Danny, you! So about those troubles. It all started on uh, uh, June 14th. I was chasing down one of Tannen's boys when this, uh, this car, straight out of Buck Rogers, popped up out of nowhere and ran my car off the road. No. Then later, I, I lost track of a witness. The poor schlub hasn't been heard from since. That wasn't your fault. And then, to top it off, I somehow managed to lose custody of an 80-year-old arsonist. And not one, but two of those godforsaken space cars showed up and whisked him away. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's what the chief said. Demoted me on the spot. My family sent me to a psych psychiatrist because they thought I was seeing things. And worst of all, my gal Betty left me. Because she thinks I'm a bad provider and a head case. <laughs> Betty? As in Jennifer's grandma, Betty? <laughs> what? Listen, Danny, it's really important that you get back together with Betty. Oh, that ship sailed. What the heck with her? I got a little secret that'll set me up with women twice as classy as Betty will ever be. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. All right, now to get Parker to spill the beans. This, this is a good hypnotic suggestion there, folks. If you want someone to spill the beans on... Oh. Okay, if you want someone to tell you their secrets, make them drunk... Play a sad song, and then get a more drunk, and then play a secret song. Danny, you! You got a secret? What is it? Oh, yeah. My secret. Well, you're my pal. So I can tell you. But don't let it get out. I've been working for Tannen for over a month now. What? It's true. All I gotta do is look the other way. While evidence is getting destroyed, or a truck full of gin is coming across the county line, and Tannen makes sure an extra bunch of bills makes their way into my pay envelope. Great deal, huh? Yeah, if you're a rat. What's the problem? People need to drink, right? As long as no one's getting hurt, why shouldn't Daniel J. Parker make a few bucks on the action? What about Artie McFly? Hasn't he been missing for two months? That's true, and all signs point to a tannin job. Oh, God. I've made a horrible mistake. I thought if I could get my hands on some money, that Betty'd take me back. But when she finds out what I've done, she'll never even talk to me again. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Come on, Danny, pull yourself together. It's not so bad. Not so bad? I'm a corrupt cop who's lost his only chance at true love. How's that not so bad? <laughs> Okay, now I need to either make him angry or make him happy. I'll start with happy. Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? The rent's unpaid, dear, we haven't a bus. But smiles were made, dear, for people like us. 
In the winter, in the summer, don't we have fun? Times are bum and getting bummer. Still we have I don't know about fun. world famous, but she's There's not a bad entertainer. Alright, so that is all for this episode. Hope you liked. Smash like, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time.